Welcome to Tokyo, Japan, a culture whose traditions run as strong as their forward thinking for new technologies. We've come all this way not for an auto show, but for Sea Attack, a consumer electronics show with a strong presence from all the Japanese major auto manufacturers and the companies who help develop the products that we may see in the cars of today and the vehicles of the future. You've seen really three trends with cars. First is the one making the car more like the home. It's comfy, it's convenient. All your devices you have at home are gonna be in the car. So you're really trying to make those interact, you know, good interaction with the phone and things like that. Second, safety, headlights. Could it be the most boring topic in the world? A lot of people think so, but they're coming out with intelligent LED headlights. They aren't gonna blind people coming at you, but you'll still be able to see well. Uh, and you're also gonna see a lot more automation. You know, automation is coming, like it or not. So cars are gonna do a lot more of the driving than, you, than you're doing today. So, Three trends you're going to see, entertainment first, LED coming along with it, and then automation later on. Welcome to C-Tech Tokyo, Japan. We've made our way over to the Alps booth, which has a next generation premium cockpit with a whole list of brand new features, including an 18 inch heads up display, which is the largest and the least intrusive I've ever seen, and a brand new steering wheel concept, which keeps track of the tension that I grip the steering wheel, as well as keeping my heart rate monitoring, believe it or not. So the idea behind these biometrics is to not only keep your ride safer, but it records all this information in case you do have an unlikely accident, we can better understand why these accidents happen in the first place. In addition to this new smart ring, it's a next generation wearable device that not only allows you to interact with all these new features, you can unlock your car, unlock your home, and make charges to your digital wallet. This is very popular here at Sea Tech. Alps no wearable device. So we've been really looking forward to wireless charging for cars because, uh, especially if it's a rainy day, you can imagine not wanting to get out of your car and having to fish the cable out of your trunk and plug it in. Uh, it would be much nicer if you just pull into your parking spot and get out of your car and walk in and have it start charging automatically. There's been a lot of concepts over the years. TDK is showing a revised version, which will have uh, faster charging than we've seen in the past, more higher voltage, higher amperage too, which is great. But they're also showing off a, a concept of being able to drive uh, and charge while you're driving. Right now, any sort of wireless charging that we see really requires a one-to-one -one contact between the pad and the car itself, uh, which is okay for a parking spot, but not ideal if you want to get charged on the go. So this would be a lower voltage. You wouldn't be able to get a lot of power out of it, but it would certainly extend your range quite a bit. The idea being you could get on the highway, cruise along for a long range, and then as soon as you got off the highway, the car would switch back onto internal battery power in that way. So uh, I think this is a long time out there, probably at least five years, if not more, before we see anything like this. Uh, but certainly, it's a pretty exciting technology. They got some great displays for cars. You know, there's one, the freeform display, and it's just, it's beautiful to look at. You know, it's very thin and kind of elegant. You spend a lot more time in your car than you probably do in your living room. So it might as well be good. So you'll see this in like higher end European cars and American cars and things like that. But really, the colors just pop and it looks nice. And you know, that's why you want it.